Hi everyone, welcome to Glam Dunk. My name is Becca and on Glam Dunk, I tell you all about the biggest, most memorable moments sports history has to offer while I do my makeup. Thank you so, so much for being here and for watching this video. I hope you love it. All of the products I used will be linked below in case you're curious about anything that I use. This is the third episode of Glam Dunk. If you have not seen episode one on the 2001 World Series or episode two on the catch, I will have them both linked below in the description box. Today we are going to be talking about Wilt Chamberlain's 100 point game. The story of one of sport's greatest records begins on March 2nd, 1962 at Hershey Sports Arena in Hershey, Pennsylvania. And no, unfortunately, we will not be talking about Hershey's chocolate today. You're gonna have to wait till Halloween for that. I'm sorry. So at this point, the NBA wasn't even 20 years old yet in 1962, and at this point in time, it was not yet recognized as being a major sports league, and it struggled to compete against college basketball. The Philadelphia Warriors, who we know today as the Golden State Warriors, um, were playing a game against the New York Knicks. Wilt Chamberlain was in his third season in the NBA, having set season scoring records in each of his first two seasons with 37.6 and then 38.4 average points per season. The Warriors' new head coach Frank McGuire's strategy this season was to have the ball in Chamberlain's hands two-thirds of the time. He was determined to play Chamberlain every minute of every game, and that season Wilt only missed 33 seconds due to technical fouls. In three games earlier that week, Chamberlain scored 67, 65, and 61 points respectively. This gave him a record 15 times scoring 60 or more points in his career. He was closing in on 4,000 points for the season, only needing 237 more. In this 1961-1962 season, NBA teams were averaging about 119 points per game. Chamberlain that season was one of only 37 African American players in the league. The NBA started integration of African Americans only 12 years prior in 1950. Many of the league's great players were black and many of those players believe that they were limited by a league quota of four black players per team. Chamberlain's Warriors teammate Joe Rucklick thought that, quote, the attitude among white players in the NBA was, in my opinion, Chamberlain is a freak who will come and go. There will never be a black guy doing this again, unquote. Chamberlain's nickname was Dipper, and he was revolutionizing the game with his slam dunks. Not his glam dunks, his slam dunks. These plays were nicknamed the Dipper Dunk. Basketball traditionalists considered slam dunks to be poor sportsmanship and thus their occurrence was rare, but as the league's second tallest player, Chamberlain began dunking more regularly. He wanted to be known for more than just being tall. He wanted to prove that he had other abilities as well. There was little to no excitement surrounding the Warriors' Knicks game on that Friday. Only five games remained in the regular season. The Warriors were in second place with a record of 46 and 29, and they were 11 games behind the Boston Celtics, and the Knicks were in last place. Even Chamberlain himself was not taking this game too seriously. Reportedly, Chamberlain had spent the night before the game in New York City, um, partying all night with a female companion before dropping her off at home at 6 a.m. with no sleep and a hangover. He boarded the train to Philadelphia at 8 a.m. He met several friends at the Philadelphia train station, had a long lunch with them, therefore almost missing the team bus to Hershey. Warriors player York Larice said, quote, there was nothing exciting about the Knicks playing the Warriors in Hershey. Chocolate was more exciting, unquote. Like I said, the game was played at Hershey Sports Arena, um, which was an old gym originally built for ice hockey. The league occasionally played games in different towns to attract new fans. This still happens today. Um, this was the Warriors' third home game um, of the season in Hershey, which was 85 miles from Philadelphia. Warriors player Tom Sherry called the arena, quote, a godforsaken place. The town of Hershey was built around a huge chocolate factory. Everything there became permeated with the smell of chocolate. 
people felt sick. I was just dreaming to leave the place as fast as I could, unquote. I guess I am mentioning Hershey's chocolate a lot, but it's in the quotes, it's not me. <laughs> It was a cold and rainy Friday night. Um, only 4,124 spectators paid to see the game, and most of them were actually there to see players from the NFL's Philadelphia Eagles um, play an exhibition basketball game against their colleagues from the Baltimore Colts before the NBA game started. The Warriors' attendance numbers were often exaggerated by the team's owner, um, but they were averaging like 5,000 fans per game at that point in time. The NBA received low television ratings, so this game was not televised. No members from the New York media were present um, because they were all in Florida covering a spring training for the New York Yankees and the brand new expansion team, New York Mets. Also only two photographers were at the game. According to McGuire, there was no game plan to get Chamberlain to 100 points. After a few minutes, the Warriors led 19 to three Chamberlain had already scored 13 points and made his first five shots. At the end of the first quarter, the Warriors were leading 42 to 26. Um, Chamberlain had already scored 23 points. He made all nine of his free throws, which was actually the weakest part of his game. He had only made like half in his first few seasons. At this point in the game, he already had nine free throws. So Chamberlain began thinking about the NBA record for free throws. Um, which at that point was 24 free throws made in a game. After being fouled, Knicks player Daryl Imhoff yelled at a referee, quote, well, why don't you just give the guy 100 now and we'll all go home, unquote. At halftime, the Warriors led by a score of 79 to 68. Chamberlain's point total stood at 41. This wasn't super uncommon for him at the half. This was maybe like 10 or so points above where he usually was um, by this point in the game. But while in the locker room at halftime, Warriors player Guy Rogers said, quote, let's get the ball to dip. Let's see how many he can get, unquote. And McGuire was like, okay. And this is where the magic began. In the second half, Chamberlain easily made it up to 50 points and the sleepy crowd started to awaken and pay a bit more attention to what was happening right in front of their eyes um, that no one was watching on television. <laughs> Chamberlain was getting triple and quadruple teamed by the Knicks left and right, but he kept his cool, kept doing his thing. By the end of the third quarter, Chamberlain had scored another 28 points, and the Warriors had a 125-106 lead. His total at this point was 69, which was nine shy of his own previous scoring record. In the fourth quarter, Dave Zinkoff, the public address announcer, began announcing Chamberlain's point total after each basket that he made. Tom Mascheri could sense the team concept of the Warriors breaking down. The team's offense would get the ball to Chamberlain and then stop and watch instead of like moving, playing defense. Chamberlain needed 25 points with eight minutes remaining to reach 100. He scored his 79th point with seven minutes and 51 seconds left, breaking his own record and making the crowd go bonkers. The spectators chanted, quote, give it to Wilt give it to Wilt. After he reached 80, the crowd yelled for 100. Chamberlain thought, quote, man, these people are tough. I'm tired. I've got 80 points and no one has ever scored 80, unquote. Yet the Warriors continued giving Chamberlain the ball. Warriors legend Al Adels later explained that all the Warriors players wanted Wilt to get the record because they all really liked him. Um, Adels himself then set up an easy layup so that Chamberlain could score points 88 and 89 with five minutes left in the game. The Knicks began intentionally fouling any warrior except Chamberlain to prevent him from getting the ball. Like they were being petty about it. They also began using as much of the shot clock time as they could, again, to prevent him from getting the ball. They weren't even playing to win the game anymore. They were willingly giving up easy points instead of trying to rally themselves. Um, I mean, they should have been trying to win because could you imagine if Chamberlain scored 100 points and then the Dubs lost the game? Like, that would have thwarted it a bit. But their focus was on stopping Bolt from getting to 100. Miss Sherry said that the Warriors' strategy was to lob the ball in from the sideline across the floor directly to Chamberlain, who would use his size and strength to get to the ball. 
Warriors began quickly fouling New York with around four minutes left, reciprocating the intentional foul strategy. McGuire pulled his entire starting five except for Chamberlain and replaced them all with bench players. The goal in doing this was to foul the Knicks, get the ball back after free throws, and give Chamberlain the ball. Like, it genuinely seemed that neither team cared about winning the game anymore. Um, it was all about wilt from both sides. Each team spent the last minutes of the game fouling each other. The Warriors ended with 25 personal fouls and the Knicks with 32. With two minutes and 12 seconds left, Chamberlain had 94 points. With 46 seconds left, Chamberlain got free from five Knicks, jump high, and put the ball into the basket to hit 100. Um, again, there's no footage of this, so eyewitness accounts of this historic basket differ as to whether Chamberlain merely laid the ball in or if he actually stuffed the ball through the hoop for an alley-oop slam dunk. Either way, the arena lost it and over 200 spectators stormed the floor wanting to get close to Wilt on his historic night. Um, Warriors player Joe Rucklick immediately ran to the scorer's tables to ensure that he was officially credited with the assist. So for years, the belief was that the final 46 seconds of a game were not played after Chamberlain scored his 100th point due to the celebration on the court. Um, even Chamberlain himself was quoted as having said this was the case. However, recordings from WCAU's radio broadcast include announcer Bill Campbell resuming his play-by-play -play call after Chamberlain's 100th point and calling the game to its conclusion. Um, but a copy of this radio broadcast of the game was not uncovered until 1988, 26 years later. Um, the original game tape had been recorded over. I know. The fact of if the game had ever finished was very conflicted for years after, um, but the game's official box score notes that Joe Rucklick missed two free throws after the break and Rucklick said he planned to miss the second free throw in hopes that Chamberlain might rebound the ball and get 102 points. The radio postgame show reported the Warriors winning by a score of 169 to 150. However, the official scores report recorded the game as 169 to 147, um, which is a discrepancy that has never been explained. Chamberlain made 36 of 63 field goals and 28 of 32 free throws. In two earlier games in Hershey that season, Chamberlain had made a combined 27 of 38 free throws. The basket rims at the arena were aging, flimsy, and forgiving. Um, balls would bounce off of typical rims, but balls near the rim in Hershey were, like I said, very forgiving. Wilt set a lot of NBA records that night. He played in all 48 minutes of the game, and in those 48 minutes, he set NBA records for field goals attempted with 63, for field goals made with 36, for free throws made with 28, most points in a quarter, 31, and most points in a half with 59. He averaged 73 points in four games that week, exceeding 60 in all of them. Guy Rogers finished with a game high 20 assists and later said, quote, it was the easiest game ever for me to get assists. All I had to do was pass it to Wilt. Now, Al Adels was a defensive specialist, which means he rarely scored. Yet in this game, he went eight for eight from the field and hit his single free throw. He later said, quote, in the game where I literally couldn't miss, Wilt had to go out and score 100, unquote. I love him. The Warriors and Knicks combined for a record 316 points in a single game. The Warriors did fall short though of the Boston Celtics then record of 173 points in a single game. The next night, Chamberlain traveled back to New York and three Knicks players happened to be traveling with him. And as he fell in and out of sleep, he got a kick over hearing the Knicks players talk smack about the quote, SOB who scored 100 points on us, unquote. Two days later, on March 4th, the Warriors played the Knicks again, this time at Madison Square Garden, and Daryl Imhoff got a standing ovation for holding Chamberlain to only 58 points. So you would think that this historic event was all over the newspapers, right? Not really. The Philadelphia Inquirer and the Philadelphia Bulletin each had a box 
on the front page announcing the achievement with a story in the sports section. The Philadelphia Daily News had no mention on its cover. The New York Times and New York Herald Tribune ran the AP story, um, New York Times on page 14, and the Herald Tribune on page 11. The New York Daily News ran the story on page 26. The New York Post gave prominent back page coverage about it, but not until Sunday. The New York Daily News on Sunday wrote, quote, Basketball is not prospering because most normal-sized American youngsters or adults cannot identify themselves with the freakish stars. You just can't sell a seven-foot basket-stuffing monster to even the most gullible adolescent, unquote. Essentially, Chamberlain's ability to score was taken for granted. Some Knicks players were upset with the Warriors because they believed um, they broke a code of honor in sports by embarrassing an opponent and disrupting the flow of a normal game for a record. They claimed that Chamberlain would have finished 15 to 20 points shy of 100 if the game had been played normally. Yet, Wilt responded to these allegations by saying he could have scored 140 points if the Knicks, quote, had played straight up basketball, unquote. Knicks players were also upset about the PA announcer um, calling each shot because it was distracting and it was debilitating. Two days after scoring 100, Wilt Chamberlain made a guest appearance on the Ed Sullivan Show. Chamberlain finished the season with a record 50.4 points per game. He scored a record 4,029 points, more than the division winning Warriors in 1947-48 scored as a team. He played in a record 3,882 minutes, including every minute of 79 of 80 games, which was also a record. And I love this stat. He averaged 48.5 minutes per game. An NBA game is 48 minutes, but he played in 10 overtime periods in seven games. So more than even possible is how many average minutes he played. The Warriors finished the season with a 49-31 and record. They lost in the Eastern Division Finals of the playoffs to the Boston Celtics. The closest Chamberlain came again to 100 was 73 points the next season. The anniversary of this game was not widely commemorated until 25 years later in 1987. Um, at this point, the NBA had become a very popular sports league with players like Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson dominating the game. The Warriors PR director Harvey Pollock said an impossible 40,000 people claimed to have seen the game and some even testified it took place at Madison Square Garden. It did not. Chamberlain claimed later in life that this was a favorite game of his, but it was not the favorite game of his. He didn't want to feed the criticism that he was more interested in personal stardom rather than winning. But he did begin to embrace it even later in life because he was proud that people who knew nothing about basketball would talk about the game to their kids when they saw him. Two other players carried this game with them throughout their lives more so than others, Daryl Imhoff for letting Chamberlain score 100 on him, and Joe Rucklick for getting the assist for the 100th point. Rucklick refers to himself as a walking footnote of one of basketball's greatest moments. There's this famous picture of Chamberlain sitting on a bench holding up a piece of paper with um, the number 100 scribbled on it. This photo was actually improvised. Uh, Warriors PR manager Harvey Pollock went into the Warriors locker room, um, took a piece of paper, scribbled the number on it, and Associated Press photographer Paul Vathis, who was there at the game, not for work, just taking his son to a ball game, um, he's the one that took the infamous photo. The closest any player has gotten to 100 since was Kobe Bryant, who scored 81 in a 122-104 win over the Toronto Raptors on January 22nd, 2006. The lack of video of the 100-point game and the fact that the audio was not recovered until the end of the 80s just added to the mystique of the game. For a while, NBA Commissioner David Stern's office phone would play Campbell's call of the 100-point basket to callers on hold. Kerry Ryman, who was 14 years old when he attended the game, claimed to have left the arena with the ball that Chamberlain used to score his 100th point. The ball was auctioned off in 2000 for $551,844, but the sale was called off due to authenticity issues. Al Adels actually claims that Chamberlain gave him the 100 point ball, so. 
In 2014, Josh Pastner, the head coach of the Memphis Tigers, stated that his father, who was a ball boy for the Warriors, had taped the game starting in the second quarter. Um, but after attempting to locate the footage within many boxes, he believed the footage had been lost. In 2016, the fourth quarter audio of the 100-point game was added to the National Recording Registry for its, quote, cultural, artistic, and or historical significance to American society and the nation's oral legacy, unquote. So all in all, this game is ridiculous. Um, barely anyone saw it, no TV, radio recordings, taped over, lost in boxes, no media, a measly pair of photographers, 100 points scored by one man one player. Yes, the Warriors manipulated the game to get more possessions. Um, yes, the game became a farce when it comes to actually trying to win it, um, but it's still cool. It's still one of the greatest moments in sports history. Um, 44 years later, Kobe got 81, but that's the closest anyone has ever come in almost 60 years. Next year will be the 60th anniversary of the 100 point game. The very notion that one man could score 100 points in any professional basketball game is fascinating um, and the circumstances surrounding this game just make it all the more captivating and bewildering. It's such an interesting story. So that is the story of Wilt Chamberlain and his 100 point game. Um, like I said, all the makeup I used will be linked below in case you're curious about anything that I use. Please subscribe and follow me on social media. Other than that, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I really appreciate it. I will see you in my next one. Bye. Back. As spore, spore portmanship. Spore, spore portmanship. Like I said, um, the game was played at Hershey Sport, Sporks, Hershey Sporks Arena. So all in all, this game was ridiculous. No TV, barely anyone. It's ba da ba da ba da. You like my cup? I actually found the Halloween Starbucks cups at Target yesterday. I was so excited. That's Binks. He glows in the dark.